Okay guys, it has been a while since we've done YouTube group times or YouTube activities, so I'm a little out of practice. <laughs> so don't mind that. Um, the <laughs> Some of you have sort of held up your little bags to me and your bags have some marshmallows and some poopy balls, probably two, hopefully two poopy balls, and a balloon. And my balloon is actually already done, so you will need also with you scissors. Um, and you are going to, first of all, tie off the bottom of your balloon as if you had blown it up and wanted to tie it. And then second of all, just cut off, cut off the top of your balloon. Now I already did it and I didn't want to waste a balloon, so I wanted to make sure this thing worked <laughs> before I showed you guys. Um, so yes, we're going to cut off the top part of the balloon. You should also have, I forgot to hold it up earlier, a toilet paper roll. Um, and you can decorate it however you like. So I might do some onomatopoeia on mine. And if you remember, onomatopoeia are words that sort of sound when you say them like whatever they are actually doing. So pow kind of has a pow. And if you say hiss like a snake, it kind of hisses. And moo like a cow sounds like a moo. So I've got a pow and <laughs> maybe I'll have a bam because bam has kind of a kind of a forceful sound. So I'm gonna write bam. And an exclamation mark. So I'm pretty serious about that, bam. Okay, so anyway, decorate your toilet paper tube however you like. Um, Sharpies, I'm using Sharpies, they work nicely. Um, also because I don't really have markers at my house, I'm sure markers would work, just be careful. Um, I think sometimes if you write on these with marker, it might smear, um, so be careful. Anyway, decorate your toilet paper tube. Uh, if I had more time, I would fill it more, um, but I'm just gonna leave it like this for now. Then, <laughs> you're gonna take your balloon, which you trimmed the top off of, and you're gonna put it on your tube. Now, tube is kinda skinny, so mine, I, I think I cut off too much of my balloon, it's a little loose. Um, you all should have had from last year, except I guess Quinn and Kylie, um, you wouldn't have had it, but we give you masking tape, so I would recommend just putting masking tape around, or if you have, your family has clear tape and you wanna put some clear tape to really hold this down, um, it's gonna fall off if you don't hold it down somehow. So masking tape or clear tape, or and I actually just thought of this right now, um, because I don't have either of those kinds of tape at my house, you can try a rubber band. So I'm actually putting just a rubber band around it to sort of hold, hold the balloon. And it's pretty easy. So once you've taped or rubber banded or held this together, um, you've got a launcher. And I recommend you talk to your parents before you do this inside, especially with the marshmallows. Um, because if you shoot a marshmallow and you can't find it, you might have pesky little ants coming <laughs> to get your marshmallows. So <laughs> talk to your parents before you start shooting marshmallows indoors. Um, and also, the marshmallows in your bag, I would not recommend eating them. They're very old. And some of them fell on the ground when I was putting your, putting your bags together. So these marshmallows are not for eating. I just read, I dropped one on the ground just now. I just, I read as I was um, deciding what to create, I read that marshmallows launched better than, than poof balls. So <laughs> we're gonna try both. Um, I actually tested this at school. I was aiming them at Miss Clinenberg. Um, which she was okay with because they're little poop balls, they wouldn't hurt. Um, so yes, I, I did aim them at her. However, I was not close and I did not hurt her. Okay, so put the poop ball in, you sort of bring it back, aim and it went across the room. Okay, ready? Aim in, went across the room. All right, trying the marshmallow, ready, set. Whoa, that one went far and high. <laughs> I, 
could even like make a target and try to aim at the target. Um, if you were to make a target just on scratch paper, sort of draw a circle, aim. The marshmallows do shoot better. Um, they're heavier, so it's easier to aim them. But now you have your very own launcher. Talk to your parents before doing it inside. Um, I recommend actually that you do it outside. <laughs> it's a fun thing to do, to get outside and sort of have an activity. Um, we've been stuck inside on Zoom a lot. So if you wanna try getting outside, that would be a good thing to do. And now, cause that wasn't a very long week. Yeah, we have some time um, because Fridays we don't have individual conferences. So I'm gonna read you a story. It's called Come Back Snoopy. It's time to feed Snoopy, Charlie Brown said to his friend Linus. My favorite words in the English language, Snoopy thought. He has that in common with Hank. Charlie Brown soon returned with a dish full of food, some fresh water, and a letter for Snoopy. First things first, Snoopy thought. He ate his supper, then sat down to read the letter. It was from his brother Spike. Dear Brother Snoopy, the letter said, the desert is warm, the skies are sunny, there is no work to do. I hope you can visit me sometime. Snoopy was very impressed. Warm weather, sunny skies, no work. Just then, Charlie Brown came back. I hope he brought sn seconds, Snoopy thought. But Charlie Brown did not bring seconds. Snoopy, he said, I've decided that you should earn your keep. You'll have to do some work in exchange for your food. You wait here for the newspaper to come each morning. Then bring the paper to me. You can start tomorrow. Snoopy was insulted. He had never worked a day in his life, and he did not plan to start now. Good grief, he said. <laughs> Luckily, his friend Woodstock dropped by. Snoopy needed a friend to talk to. There's an onomatopoeia. Clunk. Clunk kind of sounds like a clunk. Beagles aren't working dogs, Snoopy explained. Beagles are eating and sleeping dogs. Woodstock agreed. There is only one thing I can do, Snoopy said. I must move away from here. I will live with my brother Spike in the desert, warm weather, sunny skies, no work. The next morning, Snoopy packed his bag and left a farewell note for Charlie Brown. Goodbye, my faithful friend, he said to Woodstock. Snoopy traveled by bus, by train, and by paw. When he finally reached the desert, Spike was happy to see him. Let's have a long chat, said Spike. But Snoopy was very, very hungry. He unpacked his suitcase and took out his supper dish. When does supper come? Snoopy asked. Supper doesn't come in the desert, Spike explained. You hunt for it. Yipes, said Snoopy. I don't hunt. It's just as well, said Spike. There isn't much worth hunting. Snoopy was thirsty too. Where does your water come from? He asked. That's easier, said Spike. That cactus over there has moisture inside it. If you eat enough of that, you don't need to drink. If I eat enough of that, I'll be full of holes, Snoopy said. Spike showed Snoopy how to eat cactus by carefully avoiding the prickly spines, but Snoopy wasn't very good at it. Ouch, 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 said Snoopy. By now, Snoopy was very tired. Do you have a dog house? Snoopy asked. Sorry, brother Snoopy, said Spike. Just find a nice rock and make yourself comfortable. Snoopy found a rock, but he could not make himself comfortable. His legs hurt, his back hurt, and his head hurt. He was hot and he was hungry. All night long, he heard strange sounds. He imagined creeping lizards, crawling queen snakes, and fierce gully cats. Snoopy did not sleep at all. Nothing could be as bad as this, Snoopy thought. Not even work. Meanwhile, Spike snored contentedly. Snoopy was still tossing and turning as the sun rose. In the distance, he saw an oddly familiar bird. How strange, Snoopy said. I thought we only had that kind of bird back home. It looks a lot like Woodstock. The bird flew closer. It was Woodstock. Woodstock was carrying a letter from Charlie Brown. 
Dear Snoopy, it said, please come home. Things aren't the same without you. I miss you very much. Your pal, Charlie Brown. Snoopy couldn't have been happier. He said goodbye to Spike, packed his supper dish, and set out for home. He traveled by paw, by train, and by bus. He arrived just in time for supper. The next day, Snoopy delivered the paper to Charlie Brown. Wasn't such a bad job after all. Snoopy got to read the paper first. I'm sure of one thing, said Charlie Brown. I'll never ask him to bring in the groceries. <laughs> the end. Come back, Snoopy. Very cute. Um, I am particularly fond of Snoopy. So I saw this book actually at Goodwill and I bought it because it's cute. Snoopy is cute. Anyway, I um, hope you guys enjoyed. Happy Friday and we will see you all um, on Mon at Monday's group chat. Okay, bye.